Hello! Oh my god, I almost just did that thing where I was like, oh, are you here in my kitchen? Uh, guys, uh, welcome. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Uh, we are here. Uh, my name is Robin Perkins. It's Julianning with Robin. And what this show is, is it's my live cook-along cooking show uh, where I have two uh, comic guests come on. They're going to try to cook the same thing uh, that I'm cooking. In theory, uh, I will be teaching them stuff. Uh, whether or not they remember it, we don't know. Uh, although today, uh, we are, uh, first of all, today is very special. Oh, hello. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello. Uh, it is very special today because we have, for two reasons. One, uh, we have a comic, Dave Chawner, absolutely amazing. And then we have a not comic. It is her, it is her internet debut. She's a friend of comedians. Uh, everybody in the UK comedy scene loves her. Uh, so that's going to be very exciting. But also, today, I usually overcomplicate stuff. And today, we are making cheese on toast. I know. It sounds like you could do that in about two and a half minutes. And you can. Uh, however, I overcomplicate the crap out of anything. So uh, we're going to probably take about 45 minutes to an hour to make it. Uh, and the reason why we're doing this is because a very good friend of mine, Richard Wright, was like, you know what? I just want to see cheese on toast. And I said, challenge accepted. I can Robinize that. So uh, hopefully you guys are watching along. You guys have your own ingredients. You're doing it with me. Uh, but first of all, before we actually get started, we're going to bring our guests into the screen. So first of all, we will introduce a very good friend of mine. He is uh, as annoying as he is good looking. Welcome to the screen, Dave Chawner. <laughs> oh, hi. You just caught me reading my number one best selling book. Hello. <laughs> how you doing? Oh, my God, Dave. Why are you wearing a mask? You are not in my kitchen. Because we're in we're in tier two, so you've got to be socially, you know, responsible, ain't you? Is that because your girlfriend doesn't want to look at your face and she's told you this? <laughs> <laughs> it's purely because I like to think that I'm Bane from Batman. <laughs> so that's what's going on there. Very excited. Oh, Dave. I know. Dave, you've been on the show once before, which is very exciting. You made a mushroom risotto in the past, and I know uh I knew that in the past uh you were you were actually surprisingly okay at the mushroom risotto. Like, what is your culinary history? What's your cooking skills like? How would you rate them? Well, I think you've just summed up uh, me in two words: surprisingly okay. I think I always try and <laughs> overpromise and underdeliver, and I think that's what we can expect in the next half hour, hourish. I think cheese on toast. Um, I, th I think we're going to be struggling for time because I think very simple: take one bit of cheese. <laughs> One bit of plain toast, whack it on, we're done. So I don't see what's very difficult about that. Well, you just wait. And joining us today, because uh, we, we had a last minute change up. I'm, I'm so excited to have her. You'd love her as well. Uh, everybody's favorite uh, friend of comics, uh, Lydia McDougall. Come on. Thank you, Hi. <laughs> Thank you so for having me. So Lydia, uh, you have come over to my kitchen many times. I've cooked for you many times. And uh, I finally made it to your flat. You claim that you're not a good cook, but I'll be honest, on Wednesday, you made me curry and it was one of the best curries I've ever had. It was incredible. Thank you. Well, when I stay over at your flat and cats it, I have to like raid all the covers to try and find something unhealthy that I can eat. <laughs> it's like all vegetables, but. The I cat know. food is probably the most beautiful thing <laughs> in the flat, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. That cat. I, sometimes that cat eats better than us. I mean, honestly, she's got tuna that's, like, actually tuna. Uh, and we do have unhealthy stuff. Do you know what? It's up in – it's it's up here. Look. Oh, oh good. This oh, makes a great on. content. Ready? This is this, – look. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Are they you? Oh, they <laughs> Are they not vegan? Oh, whoops. Uh, also, uh, check that out. 
Oh, that is good. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going to, it'll be gone by the next time you come. All right. So we are making peas on toast. Now Dave yeah. has already uh, thrown a piece of bread across the room. He yeah, honestly bread. doesn't understand well how this is going to take an hour, but Lydia, you've had me cooking for you enough to know that <laughs> this will <laughs> take an hour. <laughs> But before we get started, because we do have a little bit more time with the risotto episode, it was like, boom, in, start. Uh, what I want is that I always kick things up a notch, right? Whenever I'm cooking, and because you got to think about the flavor profile, right? Because it's not just obviously going to be cheese on toast, right? Because you've got to combine different flavors. And so, of course, what's that even mean? Like, what's no, <laughs> sorry, what's the flavor profile? This is what this is, you're not taking the food on a Tinder date. What do you mean by that? The thing is, Dave, your tongue is gonna thank me one day, all right? Because there are different things. Okay, so there's the there's the key five, right? We have sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. Now, before you start taking <laughs> the piss out of umami, right? Because salt, salt is key. Salt enhances other flavors. And then you have like acidity cuts through things. Like you need to have the difference in flavors to enhance it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use several different components in our cheese on toast to actually make sure we have most, to overcomplicate the flavor, flavor profile. All right. Can't wait to put something sweet on cheese on toast. That's going to be great. <laughs> All right. Did you actually now before we get started, I did give uh, I did give uh, everybody who's watching, but also or if you reserved a space, you would have gotten the ingredients list. But I also gave Lydia and Dave an ingredients list. I probably uh, forgot something. Uh, I know. Did you guys do you guys have onion, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Yes, lovely. So in theory, uh, my two guests have an ingredient list. We're going to get started. Uh, you guys are going to cook around. So I'm going to, I'm putting up the hair where uh, I know I, it's very exciting. Uh, so there's a couple things we need to do off the bat. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start our onions caramelizing. That, Dave, is going to be the sweet component of it. Okay, and we're also going to- Just gonna... call it what it is. You're just going to burn onions. Don't give me this caramelizing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Like it is every time I see you, I'm like, why did I invite him on again? I don't know. <laughs> um, and then the second thing we're going to do right off the bat is we're going to get our tomatoes reducing. So our tomatoes are going to be uh, that acidity that we want to add to it. Also, you could do like an aged balsamic. Uh, but I am assuming uh, Dave doesn't have that in his kitchen. Mine are a um, week old, they're already aged as they are, to be honest. They're pretty reduced yeah. as well. And the third thing we are going to do is we are, and this is an optional thing, uh, so if you don't have it at home, don't worry. Uh, I was also going to slow roast some garlic just to like add a bit more uh, savory aspect to it. Now, Dave, I, Dave, did you do you have any garlic in the house? Yeah, I got some garlic. Easy stuff. What you do is you buy it already no. chopped, lovely. <laughs> oh. Minced. Oh, Lydia, thank you so much for being here. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, first things first, we're going to get the garlic started. Uh, so, Lydia, what I want you to do is I want you to take probably five or six cloves and in a very small saucepan. So, I'm going to use uh this one right so just like as small as you can uh on the lowest heat that you can so just basically yeah as and you're gonna crush the garlic so that it is you don't need to even peel it just take a knife right flat end of the knife here i'm just gonna um, Can I use that? what get you uh no <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to get that in the pan with a little bit of olive oil as well. And we're just going to just let it very slowly, uh, just just very slowly cook so that it actually turns eventually after about half an hour, hopefully it'll be mushy. So you do not want to brown these the garlic because if you brown the garlic, it'll eventually turn bitter. Uh, and you won't get that sweet flavor from it as well. All right. Wait, so when you say crush, you just put a knife on top of it. <laughs> And and then put your weight on it. <laughs> you can just lay the knife flat. No, you gotta right, take the palm of your hand. And then you would now, be a brilliant journalist, Robin. Was the man stabbed to death? No, he was crushed in Julienne incredibly <laughs> forcefully. All right, so this is basically what I got, right? And now again, this is optional. 
Uh, just thought of it this morning. I kind of <laughs> just thought it'd be nice to have a little bit of garlic on there. Uh, Dave, are you, but Dave, you're not doing garlic because you don't have any. No, I'm still doing um, it, but also I've added to this uh, flavor profile. I've realized that because it was 20p cheaper, I've actually got ginger and garlic. Please don't use that. Please don't you please don't put that on the pizza toast. <laughs> As a redhead, you like don't, don't bring my hair color into this, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! If anybody is watching, please comment uh, as how much <laughs> you sympathize Ooh. with me. All right, so. <laughs> Yeah. All right, now once that's on, we're going to start with uh, the caramelization of the onions. All right, so or actually, no. What? Going very fast. Oh, am I going too fast? No, it's fine. We'll slow down. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more. It's, you just let me know when you're ready, actually, Lydia. Look, so we've got an hour say? to make cheese on toast. We can go oh as slow Dave, as we like. Don't challenge me. Right. <laughs> Don't challenge me. These tomatoes need time. Um, I do love cooking, by the way. I kind of started the show. I didn't really introduce myself. Uh, I'm Robin. I am also American, by the way. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, well, Depends very on the early next couple of weeks, though, isn't it? Oh my God. Well, the, we're going to, oh, I'm doing, um, uh, cause I also do a science comedy show and on November 1st, we're doing a political show all about the, yeah, which is going to be really cool. So I'm going to be talking about like the neuroscience of your political persuasion, uh, which will be fun. <laughs> Nothing to do with cooking. Um, but what I was going to say is I, when it comes to cooking, I am, I've been cooking for a very long time. In 2002, I had kind of a life crisis. Uh, so decided to go to Italy for the summer. And to, am, I, am I boring you already, Dave? No, I'm just reading Major 50 Philosophers. Carry on. <laughs> um, you know what? Forget it, Dave. I would think that after 10 years of being my friend, you'd want to know something about me, but forget it. Um, I do, but I've got loads of stuff. I've got a COVID uh, testing kit that I want to get through. I've also got a handbook on emotional intelligence. I just thought we might as well use the time up constructively. Right. got a feature of Cosmo. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the tomatoes. So what I want you to do now is we have some cherry tomatoes. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna cut them in half and put them in uh, a medium-sized saucepan again on very low heat with a little bit of salt and a little bit of olive oil, but only a tiny bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically reduce down the tomatoes, um, and this is going to uh, basically make their flavor just a bit more intense. So you're going to bring out that tomato flavor, but it also will be some. Uh, acidity. It'll bring us some acidity to the cheese on toast. So, Dave, I assume that you do have tomatoes, right? I do. All right. Lovely. So, again, what? I'm just going to... What? Garlic. Oil what? low heat. Yeah, the lowest heat you can. Like, the right. absolute lowest heat you can do. All right? I'll put a little, little one. Very exciting. Uh, hold on. So your tomatoes should kind of look like this, just in a pan, tiny bit of olive oil, not a lot, uh, and then sprinkle with salt. And then we're good to go. All right. Hold on. I'll be right back. Um, Whew, there we go. Okay. We're back in. Uh, so Dave and Lydia, let me know how you're doing, and then I'm just gonna talk a little bit more until you guys are ready. This is what oh, I remember from trying to follow along last time. It's like a low level of panic. <laughs> no, I feel like we'll slow down. As Dave says, we have at least three hours to do this, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah tell us uh, a bit about yourself, Lid. What sort of star sign are you? What blood group are you? We got Dave, time. Lydia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do love your watch, Dave. This is going to be the best cheese on toast you have ever had in your entire life. And at the end, you still won't admit that I used up the time properly. Well, it's looking crap so far. I mean, my garlic and <laughs> 
Please don't use that. Please don't use that, dude. Well, it's burned (laughs) already. I mean, that looks terrible. It looks like your cat has been in my kitchen and has done a dirty process. You actually put the garlic into the pan, Dave. Why would you do that? Not work. This (laughs) is going all right. Uh, Problem is, though, I don't have olive oil, so I use that spray stuff. (laughs) <laughs> into that because I got it for three Christmases ago and I've never used it before. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, so the thing is, uh, like, oh, hmm. sometimes we have guests on here that can actually cook. So, <laughs> oh god! Oh god. Well, what happens to these? All right, all right, so, all right. Yes, Lydia, you're perfect. Put them again on a very low heat with a tiny bit of salt, olive oil. All right, we're just gonna, Dave, if you lose your internet connection, that is fine. So, (laughs) all right, Dave, uh, have you cut your tomatoes and put them in the pan? Yeah, I'm just reading on emotional intelligence. (laughs) My my tomatoes, and you've got to get it right, because we're, you know, Brexit and all that, we're in the UK, so my tomatoes, are uh, they're busy um, sofa surfing at the moment, and my garlic over here is okay. Uh, is very happy. Dave, uh, first of all, somebody has asked me to tell us about the Italy trip, so we are going to hear about it. You can go sit in the right. corner for it, but Dave, uh, I just I'm going to try to um, be as clear as possible because I I am I know you're desperate to mess up this cheese on toast, and I am going to make <laughs> you do it properly. <laughs> So first of all, are your tomatoes on as low of a heat as possible? Low as a heat as physically possible on the smallest hob. Got it. Perfect. Lydia, you just listen. You're fine. I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> Is there a bit of um, some sort of oil on your on your tomatoes? Good. Okay. And a little bit of salt, Dave? <laughs> I put Amazing. loads on. Oh, that is perfect. <laughs> Good. Heart disease runs wide in my Anything. family, but it still needs a helping hand. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so I did, like, okay, here's the thing, is that I do, I am kind of, I'm a combination of self-taught, but I do have a background. I was questioning my life choices uh, back in 2002, because I was going to be a marine biologist my whole life, everything I had done. And then in 2002, uh, I went to Italy. I took a couple of cooking courses in Florence or Firenze, if you're a twat. Um, <laughs> and, but it was this amazing chef. It was incredible uh, and taught more of like a mental way of thinking about cooking and creating. So uh, none of the recipes that we were following ever had amounts, ingredients. It was always kind of like to taste enough, uh, taste it. And so I, that's why every time I cook, I'm very much about tasting and feeling. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but then since then. You know what, Dave? Uh, no one's here for you. So, <laughs> just kidding. You have way more followers than I do. Um, why, were you, why were you in Italy? Sorry, can I ask this? Why were you in Italy, and why did you sign on to the cooking course? I, I genuinely went to Italy to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. I and somehow course. I landed on comedy. So... <laughs> But then I also through like a series of, uh, I, I did a series of charity dinners. So I basically have been teaching myself uh, how to cook, but, uh, and, and I think I'm all right. I think I'm all right. But then again, at these what? days during COVID, any twat with a webcam can learn how to cook. Okay, what is your <laughs> favorite thing to cook? We know that lids presumably is curry. Yeah, uh, no, surprisingly, I thought you don't like curry. By the way, what we're now going to start doing is, true to the brand, we're going to start julienning the onion. So, Dave, what that means, I'm just because I'm assuming you don't know what that word means, uh, you are going to just basically... a small Shakespeare play to it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, you're going to, we're going to start caramelizing the onion. So, you want to cut the onion uh, basically this way, right? As thinly as you can. Okay. So you're going to end up with, this is the, I'm very bad at cutting. Um, I'm not like a professional chef when it comes, I wish I could, but yeah. So you want your onion pieces to look 
like that, all right? And then you're gonna put them in another saucepan, again, very low heat. Uh, so what was your question, Dave? Oh, right, Lydia, you're talking about curries because your curry that you made me the other day was like one of the best curries I have ever tasted. Thank you so much. I like I like cooking curry and I'm good at cooking curry, but I don't like eating curry. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think it's other people. Kind of like with Dave, right? Like I like the idea of Dave. I like working with Dave, but I really don't like talking about him. <laughs> so kind of like that. <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> What's your game, um, Dave? So I make this brilliant mushroom risotto. What you do is you get a can of condensed mushrooms, <laughs> whack it in the oven, leave it there for about four or five hours, go to the pub, get sozzled, and then everything tastes amazing. It's honestly brilliant. <laughs> oh, my God. You hurt my heart, Dave. Um, so my favorite thing, by the way, Lydia, you want to watch your garlic to make sure you're not browning it too much. So if you had more time, you could actually wrap up the cloves with a little bit of art, uh, like still with the skin on it in aluminum foil and put it in the oven on low heat as well. That's another way to like kind of roast them and get the sweetness out of it. But that we're trying to do this live in an hour. So we don't really have enough time to be doing that. So have I done uh, this right, Robin? Let me see. I, I need to see you bigger. Hold on. Can we focus on Dave for a minute? I can't. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming the answer is no. But uh, hold on, I can't really see your screen. Um, yeah, I think so. Alex, can we make Dave's screen bigger? There we go. Let me see again. Yeah, I think that looks good. Just put it in the pan. <laughs> yeah. So you do. That's the level we've got to with the shirt. Yeah. Now then, uh, so once your onions are look, Dave, this is what mine look like. Okay, yeah, I'll do, I'll, I'll do with that. Yeah, okay. So you want it, again, on very low heat, very low heat with uh, some olive oil and salt, and you just break them up and let them sit. And then eventually uh, the heat will kind of break down the cell walls and the sugar of the onion will come out and they will start to caramelize, or in Dave's words, burn. Is that why it caramelizes? Because the cell walls break down on that. No, well, no, I, I just said that. Uh, there are sugar. <laughs> uh, that was so convincing. I was like, hmm, so I was. I do. Uh, No, but it is because of the sugar. So, you know, when you, to make caramel, you heat up sugar. And that is, that is, that is it. Uh, some butter, I think, as well. Um, but when you, that's why you want to cook it on a very low heat as well. And so the sugar in the onions will start to, become caramel caramelize clue is in the name but if you do it too high then you will burn them so so right now if you are cooking along you should have two or three elements so we have our tomatoes on the stove slowly reducing we have our onions caramelizing and then you may or may not have some garlic slowly cooking and the next thing we're gonna do oh no did you burn your garlic yeah i didn't look at it for a while now it's kind of that's okay. fine, right? It's still a bit brown. It's She's toffed it, it not caramelized it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much, Dave. I, <laughs> yeah, just take them off the heat, Lydia. All right. Okay. The next thing, oh, by the way, Dave, you want to know what my, my favorite dish is to cook? Yes. All right, so, fun little fact about me. Uh, I almost made it on Come Dine With Me uh wait this is like way i don't know it was probably about six or seven years ago i was going to be on the christmas special and so you have to like submit recipes and uh it's actually uh the thing that i'm going to be making next saturday and so because i was i went through a phase i was like infusing stuff all the time so i'd like infuse some flavors into some fresh mozzarella uh and so i made this like wild forest salad and so it's like a salad with, uh, I made pine needles. This is all what we're gonna be doing next week, but I made pine needles out of like the skin of sweet potato and then uh, roasted red and yellow peppers uh, on an open flame. So, and then there was uh, a pesto that was kind of like a forest pesto that's made out of uh, thyme and rosemary and macadamia nuts and all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, 
So you went through a phase of infusing stuff, and I went through a phase of listening to Limkin Park. It shows how different we are, really, doesn't it? I know. Well, the thing about fresh mozzarella is because you have both uh, fat and, like, water, because, you know, like, fat and water don't mix, like, oil and water don't mix, and you have a bit of both, so it's actually quite easy to put infused flavors into fresh mozzarella. Wow. Yeah. Do you know how they uh, originally like founded and like created mozzarella? Are you gonna? Yeah, tell me, Dave. Tell me. Oh, I don't know. I'm just asking. Oh, right. <laughs> Although, what I do know, this is a fun little fact. Uh, the reason why garlic is in the UK is because when uh, way back in like years ago uh when greek soldiers came over like ancient greek uh they would bring garlic but they would stick garlic cloves between their toes as an antiseptic uh to avoid like athlete's foot and then as they were marching on the streets of the uk they'd take the cloves out chuck them on the side of the road and that is how garlic uh came over to the uk i mean that is just exceptional but it's a top fact <laughs> <laughs> it is a good fact. Okay, so we're now <laughs> we're now gonna uh, get our mushrooms ready as well. So what we're, as I mentioned, you know, we have the sweet, the salty, uh, the sour, the bitter, and the umami. Okay, so we have the sweet is in the caramelized onions. Uh, salt will come through salt, but also a bit of cheese. Uh, we have our acidity is coming from our tomatoes, and our umami is gonna be from our mushrooms, which is very exciting. Uh, Dave, you are going to get to use your canned mushrooms or your, sorry, your chopped garlic as well. But what I want you guys to do is to slice your mushrooms pretty thin because after we cook them, we are going to lay them on the toast. So ideally, you're looking at like that for thinness. Oh, uh, that might be out of reach. <laughs> Just chop them in Just half. <laughs> Please not, oh my God. I just, you know what? When I was looking for comics to do this show, I was like, okay, they need to have, I don't know, some level of skill in, in the kitchen to be able to follow along uh, and some level of skill uh, so that I can still teach them. And I feel like I didn't really have a lot of comics to choose from. <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> when you I mean, look at the no budget ever described, this show has. <laughs> no one's ever described me as a comic before, so I'm just happy to be involved, to be honest. <laughs> oh, all right. What type of cheese do we each believe is the ultimate cheese? Oh, that is a very good question. This is so great. <laughs> well, this, I'm, I am very excited about this. So I have, I will say, uh, Dave and Lydia are making vegan cheese on toast. I have eight different types of cheese. Um, and I feel like you can't really classify what is the ultimate cheese. So what I have with me today, yeah, I have some, I have some blue cheese, uh, that'll go well with the mushrooms. I have some cheddar, very traditional with cheese on toast. Uh, I also have brie, which is nice. It's creamy, but it's a very, you know, mild cheese. Uh, I also have a uh, smoked cheese, which is quite, uh, quite nice. Gouda. Uh, and mascarpone and a bit of Parmesan. So I think the ultimate cheese though has to be, in my opinion, like a camembert or like a strong cow, like a like a stronger soft cheese. That's my, oh, no. Dave, do you remember a day when you used to eat cheese? Oh, I do, it was yesterday. I only <laughs> pretend to be vegan for the Instagram line. But oh, I, that's um, nice. Luckily nobody's watching. Um, I, <laughs> my favorite cheese, I think the king of cheese is, um, the reason I don't eat cheese, or I've got to be careful with cheese, there's this thing called rennet in it, which is like from the uh, stomach of a sheep, and that's what helps it kind of mold it together. So generally, the harder the cheese, the more rennet that's in it. And that's why I run it, because my favorite cheese of all time is Parmesan. I just think it's amazing. But also, one of the things that I love about Parmesan is that they used to use it for currency in like medieval times. So when there was the uh, Great Fire of London in 1660, whatever it was, Samuel Pepys, <laughs> that dirty little pervert guy that used to spy on people and write about him, he saw the Fire of London, and this was quite commonplace, went outside into his garden and buried his Parmesan. And that's what people used to do. 
they used to coat it in a layer that was like not impervious and they would like bury it in the ground and that's what he did and he came back his hands. is that how parmesan trees came to the uk that is exactly <laughs> how uh, well it's actually originally how we found a cheese on toast because um <laughs> there was a dead corpse on top of it it was like he's oh, toast and then there was cheese on it as well oh, so my, it's beautiful. my comment was way funnier um, yeah. <laughs> By the way, how are your onions looking? You should be, uh, they should be quite soft now. You don't want them to be very brown. So these are the onions. So it's a bit like, yeah, yeah, bit soft, starting yeah. to get some color, but again, yeah, not rotting. <laughs> I feel like Grace, you, I mean, oh my God, I just called you Grace. Uh, Lydia. <laughs> I feel like Lydia, you are going to be my favorite today. Also, uh, are you how like going back in school, being called Grace, and also trying to like be your favorite? <laughs> All right, and then also just to give you an update, my tomatoes are kind of starting to turn mushy. You can see there, which is good. Uh, we don't want them to be too liquid, but we do want them to start to reduce so that we have like a bit more uh, punchiness on the tomato flavor. So, okay. yeah, I like it. Today is very relaxed. When we did the risotto last week, it was very much like we have to go now. Uh, but today is very much like taking our time, having a little chat, although we should get started. So uh, <laughs> now we're going to do the mushrooms. Okay. So again, this is the umami part of stuff. So Grace, oh, oh my God, I've done it twice now. I've never done this before. I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> Brother, um, have a word with yourself. I know. I need to, I'm going to step away. It's because I haven't started drinking yet. Uh, so I've taken my garlic off. Uh, I'm actually, we need another saucepan. So I'm going to do some switching around. I'm going to put the tomatoes. Yeah. I know. Dave isn't doing, Dave doesn't have enough pans anyway, so that's fine. Um, see? I told you, Dave, I could complicate cheese on toast. Come on. <laughs> oh, I never doubt I've I now, it's whether I wanted you to or not. That's the real question. <laughs> so I've now sliced up the mushrooms. Um, I probably have too many in here, but I was going to make a few different versions of the cheese on toast. So we now have sliced mushrooms in the pan, again, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, a uh, little bit of pepper if you want. My girlfriend personally uh, doesn't really do pepper, so I try to use not that much. No, just doesn't like it. Uh, and then you wanna, Dave, now is your chance. You ready? Are you listening? Are you ready? Yeah. You ready, Dave? You can take some of your garlic granules, stick them right in with the mushrooms. Oh, the mushrooms gone in. I we just put them in now. Just put them in now. In, where? You, in a separate pan. You were probably you were probably yeah, in a separate pan. You were probably reading your book about how to feel emotion. No, I'm just doing a Sudoku. Okay. <laughs> uh, I really question whether or not my confidence is hindered every time I see you. Um, I'm also gonna put in a little bit of water in with the mushrooms. Uh, yeah. So you like, it's controversial. So mushrooms like absorb a lot of things, hence because of their spongy consistency. And so if you put in too much oil, like you could get a, I don't want to say liquid, but like more of a mm, sticky consistency if you used a lot of oil. But sometimes if you put in a little bit of water, uh, it's a bit healthier. So again, yeah. <laughs> So oil, salt, pepper, yeah, and a little bit of water in with the mushrooms. All right. Unlike a medium heat. And so these are gonna be the three components that go on the toast. So we have caramelized onions, mushrooms, tomatoes, and whenever you guys are ready, we are gonna start slicing the bread and pre-toasting, which is very what? exciting. Wait, oh, are we slicing it? You gotta pre-toast a little bit before you put it in the grill. How do you, what? No, you don't know this? Pre-toast it. I mean, I've seen so many jokes about pre-drinking, and I was like, but at least I understand the concept of drinking before you go out. Toasting something before you're going to toast it is literally the epitome of a waste of time. That's <laughs> like having a referendum on right. Brexit. It's because, Dave, 
I just look for any way I can possibly uh, piss you off. No, it's what you do. The reason why you want to pre-toast it, Dave, is so that um, anything that is wet doesn't actually make the bread soggy. You also want it so that it holds its structure as well a bit more. But it's really so that the bread doesn't like disintegrate. So, by the way, your mushrooms will be on a slightly higher heat as well. Don't forget than everything else, which is slowly cooking away. All right, this is very exciting. If you are watching, if you're cooking along, let us know how it's going, if you have any questions. Um, I'm very excited. Um, I just realized, Robin, that this is gonna be more than what fits in between two pieces of bread, isn't it? Well, that's why you want it. No, we're, no, 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 we're, no, we're not doing it. No, don't worry. We got it. You're not fitting. Yeah, don't worry. Lydia, I got you. I got you. Okay. It's deconstructed cheese on toast. It's just, it's not been, it, the, the architect hasn't signed off the drawings yet. That's, that's the sort of cheese on toast that we're doing. You know what, Dave? I... <laughs> Uh, I want to know where, so I did say that Richard Wright, hopefully Richard is watching this. This whole show was inspired by Richard uh, because he was like, let's do cheese on toast. So I hope that he is still watching. Um, okay, I'm going to do, I'm cooking for not just me. Very exciting. Uh, all right. Yes, we're almost ready to go. All right, Lydia. Oh, you're good. Oh, no, that's Dave. Oh, I yeah. take that as a compliment. <laughs> Wait, let me see but if Dave, I can move that actually, Dave, that almost looks like you're doing the right thing. <laughs> so I'm saying, okay. That can't. Yeah. Is Una around? Is, did your girlfriend actually yeah, step I'm in? Is that what happened? I'm a sofa and she's cooking it properly. I'm just dicking about. Yeah, I know. I can tell. <laughs> All right. So this is where we want to start to pre-toast, okay? Again, the reason why you pre-toast is so your bread can has some structure, but also that the wetter ingredients don't make it soggy and like fall through. So uh, I don't have a toaster, I will say that. So I'm gonna pre-toast in the oven, uh, but you guys have toasters, right? Do you have toasters? Yeah, yes, I just read the toaster yeah. instruction manual. <laughs> Cool. I just, Dave, it blows my mind. Every time I think I, you've said the dumbest thing you can, you just. <laughs> no, Dave, no, right. I want a control knob. Oh, there control. Wow. I didn't know you got credits in a toaster. Manual. <laughs> I'm really trapped oh, no. that you had me to do the show because we went and bought a toaster yesterday. Now it's tax deductible. So there we go. That's what we <laughs> Is that really what happened? That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I'll show you the receipts. And oh my God. Anyone Our... working for Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, I can show you too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our kitchen is too small for a toaster. It's like, I I don't know. I don't think I could actually pick up my computer. But like, it's very, can I tilt it across to the side? Yeah, that's it. So I have, I'm working, but I feel like I'm impressed with what I can do here. All right. So your mushrooms, uh, you want to turn up the heat so that they brown a little bit as well at this point in time, once they've started to cook down. So my mushrooms kind of look like this now but they still need to get some browning. My bread is in the oven and I'm about to... I'm pre-toasting, Rowan. Yeah, I'm pre-toasting. Pre you want to you wanna lightly pre-toast, okay? So do not so brown it. If my dial is one to nine, I like a three? Yeah, a probably. Two. You want it so that you can feel it so the bread is no longer soft, but you do not want it to be brown. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, we're, we're at two. Yeah, it's further than I mean. You just cut three, out. So. Couldn't hear anything you said, Dave. What? That, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's a wise crack. It's not too wise. Right. So we've got the um, <laughs> the screen toasting. All right. You have the bread pre toasting, right? How are your onions? I feel like my onions are pretty much there, right? So this yeah, is what yeah. your onions 
should look like again. Yeah. Yeah? All right. So they should have a nice level of sweetness. Um, I'm just going to keep those there. My tomatoes are, uh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know if you can, that's going to focus there. But yeah, so they're a bit reduced. They look so good. A bit mishy. And then my, I'm just browning off the mushrooms with some garlic flakes. And then we are good to go. Very excited. All right. Also got to keep an eye on the actual bread. Make sure I'm not browning it and just pre-toasting. All right. Oh. So at this I juncture, think I think it's important to ask Robin, if you are and when you are cooking, what sort of playlist do you generally rock in the kitchen? Mm, excellent point. So the thing is, my pre-comedy playlist, very different from my cooking playlist. So pre-comedy playlist, usually a bit of rap music. Uh, we got DMX in there. I like, mm. But when I'm cooking, I think it's more like Florence and the Machine. Uh, or a bit of... Uh, I was not expecting you to say that. I love Florence and the Machine. She's the best. Oh, uh, who else do I really like? I, that is my cooking vibe. Um, ooh, uh, Grace Potter and the Nocturnals. Excellent. Do you know her? No. I don't okay. think anyone does. <laughs> I, <laughs> it is very more, very more obscure. Much more obscure. I will say that. Um, okay, so my mushrooms are almost browned now, which is cool. How are, are your mushrooms browning at all, or no? Have you I'm got the I feel like I've missed out on showing you, like. All right, wait. No, I gotta take the bread out of the oven before it burns. Hold on. Can you see this, Robin? Bye. Hold on. Nick, nope, while Robin's nope, doing that, what sort of um, what sort of playlist do you rock in the kitchen? Um, pod podcasts. Podcast. Very good. Rogue, I know. Wow. We do uh, we do sometimes get educated people on Dave. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, hold on, Dave. I am going to ask you what kind of music you listen to in the kitchen, even though I don't care. Um, uh, Lydia, did you have a question in the meantime? Yeah, I was just trying to show you my progress so you can say it was amazing. But oh, okay, good. Let me see. I'm watching. Wait, I'm watching. Okay, okay. Nice. Yeah, I think you want to turn up the heat on the mushrooms a bit. Okay, so this okay. is what my mushrooms look like right now. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave, Dave, I'm not going to ask you your progress because I think we all know the answer. What do you like to listen to in the kitchen? <laughs> well, there's this little known band. You probably won't have heard of them. They're called Andy Ruskin and the Head Trimmers. I really love them. Uh, but when I'm not listening to obscure bands that no one's ever heard of, I... <laughs> Oh, Dave, what trying to look I'm forward. really into YouTube playlists at the moment. You see, I think that 2007 was the best year for music. You've got the Coots, you've got the Fratellis, you've got the Automatic, you've got Florence and the Machines, of course, Kings of Leon, Brown, the song, the Killers. So I think YouTube playlists are really a uh, really good way to go. Nice. I went to, I actually went to V-Fest in, it must have been 2009, maybe? And it was an incredible lineup. They had, like everybody you just mentioned, Fratelli's, Kings of Leon, uh, Florence and the Machine, the Kooks were there. Like, just, yeah, it was awesome. The music has got rubbish now. It's just um, Signat or Keisha or whatever they are. And it's just, it's just synthesized beats talking about trying to, like, you know, sort of, and I don't think that that's, you know, there's more to music than just sexy fun time. All right. <laughs> I don't know how we got there. Uh, all right, we're going to start constructing our cheese on toast because we have 15 minutes left and we want to get there in time. Okay, so by now, Lydia, your mushrooms should be browned. Uh, Dave, not really quite sure where you're at, but we're going to start here. So what I'm going to do now... As I actually have quite a few bits of, I'm going to just have you guys watch the construction here. Um, so what you want to do 
is you want to kind of spread your mushrooms. This is oh. why we did them very flat, okay? Oh. Well, we've got way more pieces than two pieces of toast. This is my concern. <laughs> Oh, well, no, no, no. Uh, oh, yeah. I have a few extra pieces because I'm not going to do all of them with mushrooms. You don't. Here's the thing about doing cheese on toast is you just want to make sure, again, you have a good uh, flavor profile. Uh, uh, you don't have to use all of the ingredients on a very piece of toast. Uh, got that, Dave? Got that, Dave? Uh, yeah, you got it. I'm, I'm going to use Magnolia yeah? profiles. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like Sunset Boulevard in here. It's going to be great. Oh my God, flavor, wait, magnolia petals? I feel like that's gonna be more of the um, acidic side of things, maybe a bit sour, no? I don't know. I certainly feel bitter. Don't act like I haven't used flower petals in my cooking. All right, so <laughs> next we have a bit of uh, the tomato, okay? So again, you don't wanna cover, so, because then it's gonna get too mushy, too many. So I'd say probably three or four on each piece I've got going on here. Huh. You okay, Lydia? Yeah, yeah all this good. Puzzle. <laughs> I feel like most of this is me like squinting at the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I am on track. All right. Okay. Now, all right. And one more over here. Um, all right, so then we have, if you have any of the garlic that you want to put on, you yeah. can kind of put the pieces on these because it won't be very strong since we slow cooked it. So just going to kind of spread those around. Um, how you doing, Dave? You still with us? Yeah, it's all coming together. I'm finally doing something and I'm not used to it. But I think we're sort of <laughs> putting it all together quite nicely. I wish that I'd have known how many mushrooms to use because this is not going to cover all of them. But there we go. <laughs> Here's the thing, Dave. I don't ever answer the question, how much? <laughs> it's kind of a thing. No, you've got to give some sort of guidance. Like you've done this show, like, you, like we've already done this before. And you're like, have you not pre you got pre-toasted your toast? I like, know because I'm normal. <laughs> it is normal to pre-toast. Again, anybody watching, back me up. You pre-toast cheese on toast, right? Yeah, anyone that's watching, if you pre-toast your toast, donate a fiver. If you don't pre-toast your toast, donate a banana. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> We are running on donations, by the way. So if you would like to donate, uh, please do. Uh, we will put a, we'll, there'll, there'll be a link up at the bottom of the screen. Uh, that would be awesome. Also, we take requests. If you wanna, you know, if you wanna know how to do something, feel free to find me on Instagram as well. My name is Robin H. Perkins. Uh, so, all right. So I've now got my caramelized onions on there as well. If you wanna see, it's kind of the build up. Ooh. Yeah. And now it is down to what kind of cheese. Now, again, uh, I are gonna grill these as well. So, don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning, to turn your oven on grill. It's gonna be real bad if I didn't. <laughs> I, de I definitely, <laughs> I really messed this out today. Um, the we've, been, we've been talking about frigging music for the past half an hour, and now that we've got ten minutes left, you're like, "Oh, we got to make cheese on toast now." <laughs> well, according to you, Dave, we only need two minutes. So, <laughs> how long is the grill? How grill? How long is, is the one? grill? Is the one with the? It's the square with the teeth on top. It looks like 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 square. I have many squares of teeth in them, but I'll pick one. But what temperature okay. are you grilling? At like 220. Okay. Okay. So now we All do right. the cheese. Okay. So now that that's heating up. Now, uh, I know that Dave and Lydia have vegan cheese. Uh, this is the vegan. If you do want to do, I love Violife. I think that that is a great vegan cheese. It oh, melts. Yeah. What? Very good shout. Biolife's the best one on the market, in my humble opinion. 
Yeah, I think it's great. So this is why I have so many cheeses on toast is because I'm going to do uh, several different types. So I'm going to do one with vegan cheese. So that's our, that's our vegan cheese. Uh, I also think that with cheese on toast, uh, a smoked cheese is a really nice compliment, uh, especially if you have like some acidity in there. So like some tomatoes or balsamic. So I do have like a, I have a German smoked and a Gouda as well. Ooh. Oh, Dave. Oh, right. You're doing, you're doing cheeseless uh, ones as well. Uh, of course, the classic is just grated cheddar as well. That's another another classic one. Um, and then I also think, and I did get this, that uh, blue cheese, if you're into blue cheese, is quite nice with the mushrooms. So I think I'm going to do a couple different ones. So I have one with like a Gouda and a smoked cheese. I have one vegan one. I'm going to do one, uh, probably a couple traditional cheddar ones. Uh, and then one with some blue cheese on it. Yeah. How, how cheesy are you going? So this is personal preference. Um, I I like cheesy. Although with the blue cheese one, probably not as much. You've seen the last um, 50 minutes of this show. You know she likes cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> I do like cheese. I think, okay. So... All right, we're just kind of spreading the cheese on there. So that one's gonna be a blue cheese. And then I'm gonna grate my cheddar. Oh, we're gonna do like a, yeah, we'll do this one. Oh, wow, look at that. Is that Dave's? Hey. Yeah. yeah. Can I put balsamic on it, yeah? Um, well, how, okay, here's the thing. How? What is your balsamic? Uh, I've got glaze, I've got original, and I've got extra pure. Okay, I would go, uh, how old, how many years has your balsamic aged? Well, it's been in the cupboard about five years. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really what I meant. Uh, <laughs> so there's, you can get like your basic balsamic, um, which is usually about six years, right? It's, it's quite you know, like wa watery is not the right word, but anything under six years, that's the kind of stuff you want to use on salads. Uh, and then you can have special uh, age that is like 12, 16 years. And the longer it ages, uh, the less acidic it is and the more sweet it is. So I have, uh, this is like my really posh balsamic that I love. Uh, I believe this one is 12 years. It usually says on there how many years, but you can see the consistency of it is quite a bit thicker so it'll just stay on there i mean they have some that is so sweet that you can just put it on ice cream um so depending this is really up to you Dave. um either use the glaze oh you've already done it never mind <laughs> why ask the questions dave why ask the questions uh Bored. I was listening to the etymology. Uh, you know more about balsamic than I do about my family pissing trees. <laughs> <laughs> no, any, any subs for if you don't have balsamic vinegar and well, essentially is, only have this vinegar? Uh, don't that. use that. Don't, don't use it. Don't use it. The thing is, Lydia, is that that's why we put the tomatoes on there. So no, 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 Dave. <laughs> put the ketchup back in <laughs> Uh, I very specifically did the tomatoes to bring in some acidity because I thought if I put on the ingredients list uh, balsamic vinegar that's been aged at least 12 years, nobody would buy it. So <laughs> uh, it was on purpose. Um, okay. And then the final one. So I don't know if you guys can see. I have, uh, here we go. We have... I have different kinds. So I have uh, vegan cheese. I got blue cheese. I got some cheddars. I have a Gouda and smoky one. And then the last one, I'm actually going to do a brie, which is, uh, I know, very interesting, very light. I don't know if the flavor is going to hold up to, like, everything else we got going on there, but should be good. Um, yeah, which is very exciting. All right, Lydia, how are you doing with your cheese? Are you Ooh, on there? I think, okay, let me see about this. Let me see what I feel like it's good. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Oh, I would actually put more cheese on there. I would put a bit more. More cheese. Okay, okay. More cheese. I know, I know. 
I would be careful with vegan cheese. I'm just saying that oh, I really? would be very nervous. Really? Yeah. I, think, I think it depends on the kind of vegan cheese. Because I've done cheese on toast with Via Life before, and it worked. But you're right. <laughs> you're Via Life, Robert. <laughs> Let's be honest, somebody in this group is a culinary expert and I think his name is Dave. Okay, so with six minutes, look, I've done sarcasm. Okay, so with six minutes left, uh, we're going in. We're going in, top shelf, it's grilling. All right, you guys ready? Oh, very excited. Uh, now this should take five minutes. Oh, great. Well timed. I know. I know. And then that will be a one hour long cheese on toast. <laughs> I feel like I don't know if anybody's actually watching. I mean, we've uh, just got enough time for a song, haven't we? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, Tony. No, Dave, I, you wrote a song for me earlier. Don't act like you didn't. Play it right now. Serenade. No. But I think we've covered the uh, music side of things. Liz, I want to know what podcast you listen to when you cook. Well, start off with ones that are a bit more educational and then just like slide down that level of like true crime trash until you get to ones that are actually ethically questionable and shouldn't be broadcast. Really? <laughs> Come on, name your yeah. favorite. What's your favorite? favorite um reply all is a good one about the internet yeah. that's actually a good one but then there's like really trashy ones like one called guru which is really good about like this like really expensive retreat that goes horribly horribly wrong <laughs> <laughs> they're like so salacious i think if you get too into them it makes you a worse person but is, is that is that about the Edinburgh Fringe? Because that is pretty much the definition of the Edinburgh Fringe. A, an expensive retreat that goes horribly, horribly yeah. wrong. And the more you get into it, the worse of a person you are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Keep an eye on your cheese, by the way. Um, she's on toast because ideally you want it to be melty oh, no. and brown. Robin, there's sound of smoke. What do I do? Uh, turn down your run, grill. run, get out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. okay, okay. Oh, shit. okay. okay. I'm just gonna close the kitchen door. <laughs> this oh, god, has been brought to you by the <laughs> London Fire Department. If you smell smoke, run. <laughs> I think this is actually if your kitchen is on fire, do not run. First of all, second of all, Lydia, I'm not gonna lie. I really oh, thought it's 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 moving, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lydia. Really with too many teeth. You might have to take it out. You might have to take it out. <laughs> this is the best thing I've ever seen. Oh my <laughs> god, the life house fire. Bury the parmesan. Oh, this is brilliant. Okay, I think I caught I think I caught it in time. It's just it was about to go, but it's it's calmed down. Let me see. You Let have me see to it. Show it. That's fine. That was a lot more smooth. This now sounds I like a medium. There was there was fumes. I'm not gonna oh lie, god. I for one am very disappointed. I'm also, I for one, am very surprised. I really thought it was going to be Dave's kitchen on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, dear. Like in 40 seconds of the show, we, uh, right. we did have a live fire. I have officially taken mine out of the oven. All right, so these are the different types of cheese that we got going on. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm just going to dish these up. Um, I have... Hold on. Uh, oh, one minute. Okay, although you can now, I just realized, uh, just see my bin. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, I think in the end, uh, the cheddar, I think the cheddar worked the best, although the brie looks pretty good as well. So I'm just going to pull a couple of these off the aluminum foil. Um, and then we got... Actually, the vegan one melted quite well. Uh, check this out. In exactly one hour, I have 
uh, cheese on toast with garlic mushrooms, caramelized onion, uh, reduced tomatoes, and several types of cheese. Um, cheese on toast. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, Lydia, show us what you got. Okay, so I don't know why you cried wolf, but you just have to believe me. There was smoke, but now it looks normal. <laughs> It does. It does now look normal, Lydia. I'm not gonna lie. It now looks perfectly fine. Next time, I tell you, there's a fire in my house. You have to believe me. There was smoke. Anyone watching <laughs> in Australia or California at the moment is gonna be like, you think that's a fire? You should come over here because I tell you what, that is going ain't it. This is mine at the moment. It's all plated up, ready to go. The other ones are in the oven. So not really there, but that's my addition, Robin, to the spoil. Wait, Dave, 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 your cheese doesn't look melted at all. No, that's because we didn't have enough time, did we? We spent 45 minutes from that playlist. And now, with 40 seconds in the grill, it's surprising that cheese doesn't melt unless you set your house on fire. So, yeah, it's not melted, Robin. You're absolutely right. Dave! <laughs> Dave, it should only take four minutes if your oven is on grill. Uh, well, uh, I feel like this wasn't a competition, but I'm going to make it one, and Lydia has won today. So, I think it's a fair decision. <laughs> Oh, I know, I know. I know. Put it back in the oven, Dave, and I'm sure yours will taste uh, amazing. Uh, I'm listen, to Trump on this. I I want a recount. I don't believe the postal <laughs> ballot counted. I think this is unfair. Look, Dave, I've counted the votes, and everybody on the show gets one vote. Uh, so I think Lydia has won by about seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Oh, well, well done, Lydia. <laughs> 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 thank you. Greg is not sincere, but thank you. <laughs> anyway, well, you would say that. All right, listen, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't seen the show, we are here every Saturday. Next Saturday, we're doing uh, the really special salad. Uh, the Saturday after that, for our final show, will be pasta from scratch. Uh, and a pesto, which is also very exciting because I'm having foot surgery about two days before that show. So I get to uh, do it from a chair while my girlfriend tries to do the pasta. So that's going to be fantastic. Uh, but for those of you that were watching, hopefully uh, your things is melted. Hopefully all of your things have come together. Any questions, feel free to contact me. I am on Robin H. Perkins on Instagram. You can follow me. Um, Dave, do you want to tell the people how they can follow you? Yeah, for anyone that's been affected by any of the issues raised in this show, you can follow at <laughs> London Fire Brigade or you can dial 999. <laughs> <sighs> oh dear. Lydia, as, as our non-comedian guest, do you, do you want to plug anything? I have nothing. I donate my plug to someone else. I have nothing to plug. Okay. <laughs> we haven't talked to anybody uh, but, uh, about that. I'll just take it. And if you feel like you should, you want to donate, you're like, you know what, guys? That actually was really great. I learned how to caramelize onions. I learned how to reduce some tomatoes. I learned uh, how long it takes my oven to heat up. You know what? Feel free to donate because that would be amazing. So uh, there is going to be a link on the screen that you can donate for. Uh, we really appreciate it. And keep coming back and supporting any kind of live performance that's what this is um and we'll see you uh next saturday cheers bye. i'm gonna go pop some trousers bye, bye.